Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Get Reels podcast. Wow, episode 53, ladies and gentlemen. I am Adam Chase Rennie. And I'm Christine Chen. And today we have a guest, special guest. You've seen her before. It's Kelly Penna. And Kelly wait, wait, wait. is in the art department and also one of the original OGs of Moth to Flame. So that's how we know Kelly and one of the creators of the Get Reels in this book as well. That's right. Now you're supposed to do the blow horn. Win, 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 win. <laughs> bothering me. Um, so what's going on, Kelly? <laughs> She's like, All right. <laughs> no, is Kelly's frozen? Ah, Kelly is making a cake, everyone. Oh. <laughs> but it's not for consumption. Well, it needs to be safe for consumption, but it's because you are needing it for an art project for a short film, correct? Well, this was, this was practiced for... This thing is edible. I know how it works. Yes. Your internet is terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's Uh, you're like a robot right now. You need this already. Mm -hmm. Uh Mm-hmm. Oh. (laughs) And you're frozen as well. You're giving us like a weird stare. <laughs> oh no. Well, Kelly's uh, internet is frozen. So well, well, she could be like the, she could be like, <laughs> you know, the Andy Kindler to your uh, Conan. She'll just like chime in every once in a while. And that sounds good. We check in <laughs> with Kelly and, and see what her two cents is. <laughs> oh. I feel like she's gonna have to sign back out and so back in again. She's frozen, frozen. So, yeah. all right, guys, technology sucks sometimes, but uh, for once, it's not me because <laughs> right. I'm not in Shreveport. <laughs> yeah, we're. I'm. Yeah, my internet is not the best either, but I am. I am like hardwired to an Ethernet because I have no other choice. Mm-hmm. to precisely record the best possible signal you guys yes um well we'll just keep talking you you we just keep talking too. yeah <laughs> i i mean i do but not in the slightest experience that kelly has like kelly not has, in the yes, slightest true. so well, she needs to get her internet to work <laughs> she can better articulate what happens art department in the art department. stuff yes so hopefully all right so for those of you on instagram she signed out on facebook for those of you on facebook she's gonna be back everyone else she's gonna be back uh hopefully with with better stronger bandwidth <laughs> and, yeah. and usually this is so my problem but yeah it's- and it's fine it's fine we're we're rolling through the punches and it's not that big of a deal um yes. so Christine, so <laughs> let's get into Ursley. How okay. how's the editing going? How's 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 all that? Uh, editing is good. It's mm-hmm. um it's always it's a constant up and down of frustration, uh, and I it's you know I it's very you were talking about the music writing. last time. Yeah, yeah, it's editing is very similar to writing the process. You right. get to a draft and you're like, this is it, I'm done, and then. You show people and people are like, this is terrible. And then you're like, great, now I got to edit it. And then you edit it and you get to, through the first edit. And you're like, I think this is done. And then you send it to people and people are like, no, it's not done. And you're like, great. Um, and it gets worse as you get closer too. So, so, cause each time you're even more convinced it's done yet you're still getting, no, it's not yet. And so, and you're like, I don't know what else to fix, you know? So that's where I'm at right now. It's, I'm this last iteration that we were taking off and then I uh, sent it over. Hey, Christine, let's try not to play with this a little bit oh, because sorry. it's interfering for some reason with the mic. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so I, here, let me just right. take this out. You, yeah, no, you're good. 
So I, um, we sent it over to the, the art distributors and mm -hmm. then they gave us notes. And I'm like, ah, oh, crap, no, we're not. It's annoying because when you're editing, there's a point where you have to get a picture lock because everything else, every other position is in a different program. So the colorist works in Resolve, the style mixer works in Pro Tools, and the reason for picture lock is that these, they don't integrate seamless, seamlessly with each other, if that makes any sense. It does so make if, sense, it does. Yeah, so, so on Premiere, if I decide to edit after picture lock, it fucks up all their timelines. Yeah, completely. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's really frustrating because I but feel like- you actually can't afford that just time-wise. Yeah, time-wise, like, yeah. So <laughs> it's really frustrating because I am here being like, okay, pretty sure we're almost there. And then now I'm getting notes and I can't stop the process for art, for color or sound right now because of how tight our timeline. So we're having right. to strategically work around it. So well, how I, I'm dealing with it, poor Jeff, is that he, <laughs> so the um, film itself is so big that you have to cut it up into pieces to deliver it to the other um, parties. So right now, right. in order for the, uh, what we call the OMF files to go over to the sound person, I have to cut it up into 10 minute reels to deliver it over. Um, because through Premiere, you can only export at, uh, a maximum of two gigabytes. After two gigabytes, it won't include all the files and it does something funky. So you have to, you have to cut it up into tiny little pieces. And so mm -hmm. I'm basically telling Jeff, work backwards. Like I know that the front's gonna change, but not the back. So like start working backwards and I'll tell you like when when I start editing the first part I'll know when the first reel ends and he can just move everything to that exact timeline hopefully it all just seamlessly links together that's yeah. my in theory that's what I'm hoping it will work but like sound people hate this obviously because like the likelihood of screwing up what they're doing right now is huge you know so I just I have to be very good with knowing like all right, I'm only, I'm editing here and this is where this real one starts here. Real two ends here, real, you know, type thing. So instead of doing it, just, it, it all one lump sum. All one lump sum, yeah, it just sucks. You can't, so you, you can't be spread that thin. Jesus yeah. Christ, Christine. So I just, it's really, really frustrating. Um, but right but now- It seems I'm, like it's the most productive thing to do is to just like keep it piece by piece. Um, yeah. By the way, Kelly is on the uh, Instagram on live. Instagram. So okay. Kelly, request to join with uh, Christine if you can. I think you can, right? She should be able to, but yeah. the, isn't she? She's not on. The problem is she can't hear you because she's not on Zoom. Well, I mean, oh, but she can. Oh, no, hear she can hear me through Instagram. Instagram, right? Wait, can can none, can no one hear me on Instagram? Can you hear? No, me they can. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. No, you're yeah. fine on Instagram. Then, I'm just thinking of, of Facebook. You make um, me nervous. I want to make sure I'm projecting. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, um, you need to request to join this IG uh, story, story, basically. That's right. Yeah, you just need to join the IG. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. But yeah, and so we're, that's the point where I'm at is like, this timeline is stupid. So uh, I, I already knew that. But it's the most productive. That's the point I was trying to make. Like, sure. it, it's probably for yeah. you and for the sake of the crew. <laughs> it's yeah. probably like... <laughs> we're, what we're trying to do is make the uh, the timeline for uh, Sundance. So Sundance's uh, regular right. time timestamp is August. Luckily, it's not August fifth. I thought it was August fifth. August fifth is actually the early submission. Uh, so the so we actually have a little bit more time than we okay. think. However, we're also remember how I said we built in kind of a we built in uh, forced what are they called deadlines along the way and so to mm. make us to kind of light a fire in our ass mm -hmm. so the the two deadlines that we have are um the 23rd is is a little in progress screening in gainesville for the folks of gainesville that donated to our uh film 
and then the 26th in Austin. So that's what the colorists and sound people are, are rushing to do right now, which is good because these are like actual projected big screens with like good sound systems and stuff. So it's to, it's to give us an opportunity to also hear and see how everything looks on a big screen, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's also just really stressful because of this whole, um, Cut, still I'm still cutting or figuring out like what to cut from the intro and, and whatnot so it's technically not still not picture locked but but you're close I'm close you're it's close. just really frustrating you can taste the yeah. rainbow yeah so but uh yeah no that that this is I like in this process of writing a lot um where each iteration you just feel like this is it. And then people give you notes and you're like, mother yeah. effer, like, when is this going to end? Like, I thought this was done, you know? So it's right. the question of like, when do you pull the plug and say it's done? So I don't know what Kelly's doing. <laughs> I don't know either, but let's just keep going. We're, we're going to see the requests at some point and, or Kelly, if you want to just go back to zoom, if it's better connection that way and just go audio only that's that's totally fine well yeah. we want you on the show kelly so um <laughs> try it out if you want if not it's no big deal we know yeah. i know internet issues it fucking stinks yeah it sucks kelly's yeah, with so us in spirit in in cyber spirit <laughs> um yes. so christine are you feeling like you, you must feel like some sort of relief that you're like almost towards the end zone here, right? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. it's definitely not like I'm, I'm not at a breakneck. I mean, it feels weird because, like I said, my my schedule was wake up, go and edit, then go to sleep. Literally every single day for the past month and a half, two months. Right. So it's weird yeah. now. Now. When I got to the point where I'm not doing that, it's kind of like, okay, now what, you know? So, uh, so that's, it feels weird, but it is nice to have time back. Um, but I think that's, I don't know. I think it's, it's just hard because I'm still balancing like some producing stuff too on the, on the side. So it's like, I'm, I'm luckily I have Peyton. Peyton's helping me out a lot with, with a lot of the producing things, but like, and in, um, Candace, but shout it's out just to them. Never, yeah, never ending. Um, and the I think the what I'm learning from the experience is, is that uh, it's always it's a every every department has a perfectionist, right? Yeah, and it's awesome, and that's why you have department heads so that they completely focus in, on what they're good at. Okay. But what comes of that too is that at some, some point, I think the department heads also have to realize that this is a bigger picture too. And it's not always about one single department, it's all how they all come together. And so it's interesting having to juggle that, um, that like everybody, wants the best for their department, the image, the sound, the whatever. But like like Jeff is having to work around the fact that the edit is not completely done, even though I thought it was, you know? But he's concerned with like his workflow, you know? Right. But, but because of his experience, he's able to be like, okay, I'll figure out how to flex and work with you and stuff like that. And, and, essentially compromise um on his his end um same thing with the color um she's dealing with a very tough schedule and it we're all working virtually luckily i i am in town this week for the purpose of being able to talk and work with her in person and uh go through coloring and stuff like that but it's 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 tiring. <laughs> I bet. I mean, I mean, just hearing you say all that, yeah, I, I can, I can understand why you, 
Yeah, every, every everything just feels so spread thin. Not at the you know at the you know uh, expense of either the people around you. They're doing yeah. an absolute fine job. It's just you and th- almost getting to that end zone. I hope you yeah. take a break. I mean, I I know close. you probably can't, but yeah, you should celebrate <laughs> because it at is some um, point maybe. And you still hey, listen. Yeah. 20 episodes ago and also on the shoot you talked about that tattoo maybe maybe it, it, that well, time when will I'm come done. Yes, picture when lock come. when picture when we're actually for real co- everything's done then yes i will i will definitely celebrate at that point right now it's like so close and within my grasp yet so far away and uh i've i've memorized the film literally from the front to I can any part and quote and I can, I, I even have the exact inflections of how the the uh, actors say their lines because I've stared at it so many so much um <laughs> but I don't know I'm, I'm I'm very proud of it I'm proud of what people have done but and it, I don't know it's we won't know how it's going to be until the world starts to see it in the other two cents. And that's the, that's the scary part is that. Or the most exciting. It's both. It's exciting because it's really fun to hear and see how people react. And it's been, the test screens have been great. Um, In general, people have reacted very, very at the right spots, which is really fun. Um, But when you come to like critics, or people who this is their whole job and they all they do is watch movies they don't care what you had to work with you know none of that makes a difference to them you know oh you only had 11 days don't give a shit they don't give a shit if you had only this that's why it's so hard because you're competing with the million dollar budgets right that's they they just care what's on the screen literally right yeah which which is unfortunate, but also at the same time, I don't know. I feel like the audience is smart in that way. I mean, it's an old philosophy thing, but uh, Joseph Campbell said, never underestimate the audience. And you, I mean, because audience oftentimes are smarter than you think. So they probably do see the quality and the love and the passion behind the storytelling of Ursley. I mean, it shows for me i'm sure it's going to show for for a lot of people and that's coming from a dummy ladies and gentlemen that's (laughs) not coming from a guy who is just like oh i'm a savant in the in the art of film i'm not i'm a i'm a i'm a greasy dummy from oakland california it's it's not not the uh stop it (laughs) but but you know what i mean though right christine like it's it's one of those things where you you should definitely be proud of what you've what you've done, and I think that will show within, if that makes yeah. sense. It's just like yeah. the love and the passions all it's all going to be there, because everyone around you. I'm so burpy today, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, everyone around you are, like you said, the per- department heads are perfectionists. Like we yeah. care about the story so much, just as maybe not just as much but very fucking close if anything or just as much you know and you you shine through that you know and then you you also cast a spotlight on all of it between props to cinematography it's it's all there it shows yeah. and i think anybody who knows film and loves cinema and loves film like christine and i do it shows I it sure shows, dude. So. I, I, I think I think it will. I'm willing. That. I'm a, I'm a bet. I'm not a betting man. Yeah. But I'm willing to bet. I mean, it's tested really well. Like people were like, "Wow, this is a really fun story," and and, yeah. and everything. So, um, I hope we prove. What I'm battling with right now is that the distributors, distrib. Okay, here's something I'm learning. Distributors <laughs> hate cross genres. They hate things that don't fit easily within a certain genre because it's harder to market like really they like purely horror or they like purely comedy or purely this like it's because it's this is 
a lot. It's all sorts. It's not, it's a, it's a drama, but it's also a relationship film. It's also a creature film. It is also a horror inspired. It's fantasy. It's so it's unique. It doesn't. Every time. Fit. Here's the thing with cross genres. Every time I think of that, like, or, or however you cross the genre, it, it, it's not the fact that you have to market it as such label. I mean, I know, I know it's, I'm going as far as saying that we need to live in a categoryless society of fucking genres. This is dumb and stupid, but I live my life with genres. So mm -hmm. what the fuck can I say? But <clears throat> I think that whole reason behind like the marketable, like commercially viable standpoint of it is just, it's a little, I don't know. I don't get it. I but that's why I guess that's why marketing is there because of, right, it's of hard. people I, like me. I it's hard because I know that's bullshit to, in my opinion. But I yeah. know like in the long scheme of things it's like well no like we have to you want as many faces on this as possible which I right. understand. It's just come on. Give me a break. Action no, no, adventure. It's, it's, Action it's, it's, adventure. It's, it's, yeah, okay. I, I, I said you know? it's, I, I feel like it's a fantasy thriller. Fantasy thriller. Yeah, it's yeah. a fantasy thriller. It's action. Thr and then it's rooted. It's uh, obviously going to be very female skewed in terms of uh, who our target audience is. And it just happens to have a creature in it. You know, like, I, I don't know. It, a it goddess, doesn't if seem you will. like it's that hard to market, but. I don't know no. distribution, but I'm exactly. asking some friends who are in distribution who tend to um, do cross genres to get their opinion on it. But uh, I'm very lucky to uh, be friends with the people from Vanishing Angle who did uh, Thunder Road and their newest one, which is the Wolf of Snow Hollow, um, which is a cross genre. And they just did another I one. I, I haven't seen this one because it's in the festival route right now, but the Werewolves Within, that's also a cross genre. So I'm kind of, I'm going to them right. to get an opinion as to like, hey, what are your thoughts on this? Because they've had a lot of success when it comes to distribution with um, cross genres and stuff. So we'll see. Yeah. Just I have faith, Christine. Yeah. Yeah. So I have faith in it. And I'm like, this is so easy to sell. I don't know why it's why why it's a problem. But I itself. I also haven't seen I haven't had to sell a lot of films. So I mean <laughs> first for everything. Right. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Good <Yeah>. point. <laughs> uh did we get any questions at all? Uh I didn't I actually did a terrible job asking for people to get to ask questions right around, so. okay all right so then i want to ask you this there was something last yeah. episode that i kept thinking about and uh i wrote it down to today because i knew i knew i wanted to talk about it at some point um the editing process and the the like sharing that like having your film projected on a big screen for the test audiences yeah like your perception and your reaction because i didn't think about it either for myself but i always live my life through small monitors and i sometimes often don't think about big screens and i was kind of having like this moment of like oh right you always filmmakers far way before us like always thought about you know like the scale of what you know the the theater could could have and like how many characters you can have and you know one frame and stuff like that you know you don't you don't think about this but seeing it for the first time on a big screen when you just seen it through your okay. your 15 yeah. inch <laughs> book bro yeah that, it's just like i can't imagine what a trip that must be it's definitely a different experience because like yeah they say, for example, like a 10 foot Ursley right in front of you. That's amazing. Yeah, and, it, and people it, are going to experience that. I'm so excited. Um, the way I can liken it to is I watch the behind the scenes of like what it takes to film using IMAX type stuff. And their IMAX, oh, their, right. their like frames are like this, like are huge, you know? 
And they're saying like a tiny speck of dust when blown up on IMAX screen looks like a giant like ass piece of something on the on the frame because it's so big. <laughs> Jesus, um, everything's so it's magnified. Kind of like that. Everything is magnified. That's the biggest thing. Um, I and I have a even another big problem. My computer is so old and archaic that like I can't even wow. really feel the pacing of the film sometimes without having to export out the film because it lags every minute right. when I'm playing. Yeah. So I have That's to, true. it's really annoying. So I, I have to export oh, it every night so I can the next day watch it through without it like lagging. And then I can be, feel the real pacing of the film. Um, right. So that's been difficult. But yeah, when it's on a big screen, that's when you start noticing like, oh, on the small screen, that wasn't a big issue. I couldn't see her face there. And now I can yeah. see it magnified. And that's clearly out of sync, you know, things like that. So it's good to test these things. Um, right. Or like when you're listening or hearing it through different speaker systems and stuff understanding like the sound where, yeah. yeah so God. the sound and how it, how it flies and how oh the music's too loud here i can't hear any of the voices because you know like just i don't know it's a it's each process has its nuances that's for sure so um I but i I'm, I'm lucky to be able to have the opportunity to be able to like see it on a big screen first before you know that not everybody gets to do that um, I, I like I can say I have seen none of my short films on a big screen until they're at a festival, right? Right. So this is the first time I've been like putting in the extra effort to have these. That's why these test screenings have been so invaluable because I'm able to like see how an audience reacts to certain things or get audience feedback or just really see how it translates on a big screen and know how to what I need to do to to make it better, you know. Yeah. So, and every um, frame fucking counts too. So like you said, like the things thing, you couldn't yeah. see on the small monitor, you're like, what yep. is that? Oh man, no one can fucking see that shit. Then yeah. you see it on the big screen, you're like, oh you're shit. Like, oh, totally can see that. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, that's, but that's, that must be, I don't know. That must be an amazing feeling too, because just like as a child, like I, I dreamed of like that day of just like seeing something that big because my entire childhood i mean don't get me wrong it's great but it's me just like in front of a tv that fucking close you know so i i just live my life on small little monitors and stuff like that and then of course going to the movie theaters i've lived in the movie theaters for sure but i never thought of like the frame and scale as it is like in the movie theater as opposed to home video you know, or yeah. you watch it at home, streaming it at home, whatever. Um, you know, the part that I saw the most impact was sound. Like, and sound is the most un like it's it's the most easily glazed over thing that you 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 think of, and then once it happens and the surround sound hits too in the movie oh, theater too. You talked exciting. about that last episode. You yeah. were like, you didn't know how something was going to work until you tested it in the test screenings. And you're like, oh, yeah. that's how movie theater speakers yeah, work. Yeah, I'm like, oh, shit. no, that feels good. Yeah, I can feel the vibrations in my seat. Yeah, like. Th that's that, fucking rad. That's like that Terminator 2 cool. shit. Yeah, that yes. feeling is cool. Especially when, I, I mean, this is how I edit it. It's like, this is the best quality. Like sound is through this little, you know. It's through, thing. yeah, yes. Yeah. And that, that's limited and maybe through my <laughs> laptop speaker. So, I mean, even doing the sessions in the, with my composer in his studio, which is much better than mine, still you don't feel w when it's these giant ass speakers that are surround sound booming with the subwoofer and stuff like that. It's just like, you can't compare to that. It's magical. Like when that, yeah. When that happens, you're like, oh shit, I made a film. I made a film, you know? So, fuck, dude, that's awesome. That's so amazing. that part is really, really cool. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a learning experience. Uh, I'm learning a lot through this process. I'm very proud of what we made, trying to take yeah. all, cons all the criticism and notes with the, you know, 
grain of salt, but also trying to not be discouraged as well because everybody wants the film to be better, mm. but it is a lot. Everybody's giving you notes. And right. It gets to a point where like, is any of this good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, that I never, I never thought of it that way, but you're right. Yeah. That's yeah. like, you, you, you just don't know until it happens and then the people react and experience it, you know? Yeah. And then, and then you're trying to fight the urge of just like, all right, well, we're going to, we're going to have the, the Christine Chen cut <laughs> next year. Yeah. <laughs> Once we release it. Yeah. So like the Snyder cut release the Chen cut. Yeah. Release yeah. the Chen cut. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, I think um, I think you're right. I, I think, yeah, it is something to be proud of. But uh, from the moment that you had this idea, just kind of like on paper and then having it become the way it is. And of course, it changed throughout that process. But right. Ladies and gentlemen, you you saw it right before your eyes. You know, I mean, we 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 experienced an entire year of Christine in. I mean, of course, we didn't talk about Ursley uh, at, at nauseum like at that time, but you had the idea, and then once once you got into the swing of the writing, and then you got the script down and all that. That's when we went into season three. And in that process, that was a magical journey in of that self. It's a long-winded way for me to say uh, thank you for the journey, Christine. And uh, it's been a journey. It's still a journey, and it's going to be a journey all the way to when this thing gets released. Because I'm sure I, there's a whole other like after this, it doesn't stop. I gotta cut a trailer. I gotta make sure that there the artwork for the poster looks good, so that people will want to buy it. You know. It's Absolutely. like a whole, whole thing. Um, yeah. But yeah. I was, uh, yeah, that's why with, with Kelly, I was, I was excited to have her on, but I, I hope she's watching this right now on Facebook or Instagram. Um, we miss you, Kelly. But yeah. uh, I wanted to say, though, um, that the, even the experience of just being on set, yeah, that was, that was in of itself a, a, a fantastic experience. Of course, you know, take it with what you will you know by by however experience you got within the cast and crew and there's even some of the crew on this instagram live right now uh who can vouch for that but i think the journey nonetheless was it it's it's something that will that will always seep into my head every time i think of the word ursley you know and i and i'm part of that history and i couldn't be more proud of that i couldn't be more excited about that just to just to be that small little part of Ursley. it just that's a that's that's awesome i mean when i was a kid i didn't think i would have like a film credit at all i i thought that's just that's a that's a dream for another dummy not this dummy <laughs> you know i thought i was just like oh yeah no it's just going to be retail for for the rest of my life you know i don't know i don't know about you guys but I'm living, I'm living that <laughs> store manager life through retail. And then I realized, oh, I'm unhappy. <laughs> and, you know, I gave it up to, to do this. And I, and I couldn't believe the, like, I mean, because we all struggled, like you crew, everybody, like we all, even in the Austin film industry, at some point we've all struggled any industry for that matter. Everybody at some point has struggled, but to get to this point, makes all of that so fucking worth it so goddamn worth it yeah. it's 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 truly truly magical when when you uh when you have a a retrospective on it once everything was done and then you think about you, you know you think back and stuff like that even going back through the journals too that i talk about on the podcast um that's a trip that's fucking yeah. awesome you know I smile ear to ear, even, even on the bad days when I'm just like, yeah, I'm mad. And I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I, I get so happy. I get so excited. It's like, I don't remember that. I'll remember that for the rest of my life. That's, that's amazing. And uh, yeah. yeah, I was part of that stuff and whatnot. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. It's like, 
when it's this all isn't the done. end of the podcast by the way ladies and gentlemen we're we're, <laughs> we're not gonna end the podcast I, it feels like we're ending this podcast we're not we're gonna keep doing this podcast so the wheels fucking come off christine <laughs> okay it's just what it is yeah i love this too much and i love doing this with you too much yeah. so uh anyways i interrupted you what were you saying oh no i was just saying we're all said and done I was listening to a podcast by Shyamalan, the night Shyamalan, and yes. um, from uh, how you how I built this is the is where it was from, and he said something that I really that really resonated with me was the fact that like anytime somebody is doing something regional, they're going to have to fight a lot of stuff um, because it hasn't been proven, it hasn't been done before, and people are scared about things that they don't know. They don't have any records of how to make it work. And so you just have to remember that that's just natural for that, that fighting process. Like you're, cause you're trying to prove to someone that, hey, even though this is original and different that there is a place for it and that it's, you know it's, it's easier to make carbon copies of what exists out there already, you know, and because it's it already just, happened. It's already yeah, been and done. if distributors had their way, it seems like that would be better because it's, I get it, it's easier. They have the marketing plan already in place. They don't want to do much research. It's like, it's already there. It's there. There's a reason why sequels do well, you know, because they now have found their audience. All they had to do is resell it to that same audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, so he kept saying that like, yes, it's in the beginning, it's like a fight to, to, prove to people that you know your film works that there's a market for it but in the end he, he said that it's not about it's not about the awards it's not about what other people think and it's not it's it's all for the film right for the filmmaker it's all about the process yeah and I look back and it's like oh, yeah I'm stressing out on obviously oh selling this film, stressing out about people liking it, stressing about all that stuff. But like, I'm sure when I look back, it's like, I just feel lucky that we, we even got to do this, you know? And Me too, uh, yeah. It's neat to hear somebody like M, M. Night Shyam Shyamalan say like, hell, when he was editing um, Sixth Sense, uh -huh. he was thinking, well, this is the last thing I'm ever gonna get to direct. <laughs> he even thought that and it he turned it into yeah amazing gold like it's yeah. it's such a great fucking movie that is still quotable by the way to this day yeah. so funny and that's how i feel right now i'm editing yeah. this and being like well I guess this is it for me my career is over <laughs> i think i think it might be it might be I don't know. It might be relieving to, 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 to feel that way because it just, it feels like, um, well, I don't know. It, it doesn't probably necessarily feel relieving that it's like, well, this is going to be the last thing I'll ever fucking do. But it's one of those things where I was like, I need to get this out there. Yeah. I want to get this out there and I need to get this out there. The story means that much to me that I'm willing to, <laughs> I mean, in your words, not mine, ruin my credibility. <laughs> To, to do this you know yeah. and it's it's not the case at all i don't see that one fucking bit if anything this is gonna blow up i think it's this shit is gonna be i like it wild. A lot. yeah are you coming to the the uh, in progress screening on the 26th i'm gonna i'm gonna tr i'm gonna try because yeah. i'm also uh also ladies and gentlemen i am broke as a joke so i've been trying to make money on the side so <laughs> i've been doing lots of like writing like copywriting side gigs here and there mm -hmm. um and i think i have something that time i'm not sure but I, I'll, okay. I'll i'll message you i'll message okay. you very close to it cool it's um, at night so oh really oh right yeah. on awesome yeah hopefully um, yeah, I think I think I don't I want to come. And I, sure. That's going to be a, a no. It's going to be a no brainer, yeah. Christine. Um, I'm going to do my absolute best to get there. And I also was thinking about the um, I was watching the old fun employment podcasts as well. Yeah. And Jesus Christ. I mean, we've come a long <laughs> way in terms of podcasting. Yeah. We came a long way now this feels so now it feels like 
I don't know. It's just like, it feels so natural to me to do this podcast with you. And I love it so much. It's something that I, that I expect doing all the time. And back then I was so uncomfortable. We were both uncomfortable with just well, like, we didn't know what we were doing. It's pretty, we funny, had no like fucking, how, clue. I mean, it is funny. Clue. It is. But that's the cool part is that just through this tiny podcast alone, we can already tell like how much we've grown in the past year, you know? Yeah. Already. We've, yes. we've grown so much in this, in this podcast and it's so wild to, to see that. And how natural it is even even our worst episode was still relatively not bad <laughs> i listen I hate to, to say our podcast i find they're fun and entertaining I, I think i think that well no it's just like the, the episodes i think in my head because it's not that you no it's me i'm the problem oh whatever. there's episodes where i'm like what are you doing are you out of your mind adam <laughs> are you fucking crazy dude and and of course, like I snap out of it and I realize, oh yeah, I was, I was feeling something else that day. That was a completely, that was a completely different Adam. And, and I mean, I'm not saying whether or not I'm much happier or sadder now. It's, it's just, it's, it's different. Um, and also, you know, my love for being in front of the microphone. Um, anyways, Christine, I don't know if uh, we've, we're almost approaching the hour. So, uh, we could, we could talk a little, we can, we can talk a little more. We can, we can wrap shit up and take this in for a landing. Um, yeah, I mean, thank you. I I guess I originally wanted to talk about art, but since we'll, we'll just have to, I know. And I, and I just don't feel, I don't feel right talking about art without the genius, without the art genius who taught me, Yes, we will um, we'll say that for another day. Yes. We're going to save it for another day. We're, you know what? We're going to, I mean, hopefully you're going to be here in Austin, right? We're going to talk about this, but we, we want to, hopefully yes, we can do will, this all face to face. I'm point. leaving on the 29th for LA. Yeah. Oh, snap, snap, snap. Okay, cool. Yes. Well, yes. before then, we're going to yes. try to do this face to face, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do, I'm going to do my absolute best to do this face to face. All right, Christine, I think, uh, I think that's it. Unless you got something, something. No, we can take it down for a landing. Take, take this bad boy down. Ladies and gentlemen, get your books, get your stickers, get your shirts, get everything at get realisms.com. <laughs> also, ursleyfilm.com for your podcast goodness. We're, we talk about everything about Ursley. So if this is your first time on the podcast, welcome. Thank you. We love you. Subscribe. But also join and listen in on, on the story of Ursley. It is a fantastic story. And it's it's gonna be it's gonna be worth your guys' ears and listening to because this is hardcore behind the scenes filmmaking magic that you're not gonna get anywhere else, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Pretty much. This is really Behind the scenes. Be this is as behind the scenes as behind the scenes as you can as get. So you can get. It's all the trials and tribulations of what it takes to make a film for a little to no money. And it's it's hard, but it's rewarding. <laughs> it's really hard. It's really hard, guys. That's the yeah. that's the universal motto for this podcast. It's really hard. It's really hard. Um <laughs> life is hard, even. No, I uh <laughs> All right, you guys, ladies and gentlemen, that has been the Get Realisms podcast, getrealisms.com. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Instagram. Thank you, Facebook. We are going yes, yes. to see you next week. Hopefully. Next week, hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully Kelly will work. And ho- hopefully Kelly yeah. would work. All right, ladies and gentlemen, goodbye. Bye. Bow, 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 bow,